In this beginner guide and tutorial on how to sweep pick on guitar like a beast, I show you exactly what to do and exactly what not to do. While it is true that there is more than one way to sweep pick on guitar, this tutorial will make learning and mastering your sweep picking much easier. In this beginner's guide, you're also going to learn seven common mistakes that people make when learning how to sweep pick. Hi, I'm Tom Hess, and when I started learning how to sweep pick, I just couldn't do it right no matter how much I practiced. I just felt stuck at the same speed for a long time. My sweep picking was sloppy and, well, just wasn't very good at all. Until one day, a guitar teacher of mine told me all the things that I was doing wrong and how to sweep pick the right way. Now, once I learned this, my playing got smoother, faster, and everything got much easier. Now, since that time, I've taught countless guitar players to do the same, and today, I wanna to teach this to you. So before we talk about sweep picking, the first thing we need to do in this tutorial is talk about how to hold the guitar pick. Now, I know you've probably been playing guitar a long time, you probably have your way of holding the pick, and you're thinking, I don't need to be told how to hold the pick. I know how to hold my pick and all that sort of stuff. I get it. But if you hold the pick in a certain way, it will make learning sweep picking, if you're still learning it, much easier. So the short answer on how to hold the pick is to hold it like this, where you're using your, your thumb and your first finger and you're pinching the pick like this. This is how I hold the pick for everything, not just sweep picking, but for everything else. Now, if you want to hear all of the reasons and all the science behind why I believe this is the better way to hold the pick than doing this, you can check out a video that I've recently made here on YouTube. It's called The Right Way to Hold the Guitar Pick, The Ultimate Guide. So go check that out if you have any questions on why this is better than this for holding the guitar pick. Now. The second thing we're gonna talk about in this tutorial on sweep picking is what I call point of rest pick positioning. What does that mean? The point of rest is the location of where the pick is in relation to the strings when you're not playing anything. So many people anchor or put their palm on the bridge, not only for doing palm muting, but pretty much for doing everything. This is kind of their reference point by having this on the bridge. I'm gonna suggest not to do that at all. Now it's okay if the palm touches the bridge, it's nothing wrong with it being there, but the problem is when you use this as an anchor, look where the pick is when it's not playing. Where, where is its point of rest? Answer, the point of rest in this position is with the pick up here in the air not down here in the trench. The trench is my term for the space down in between the strings. You want the pick, when it is resting, when you're not playing anything, to be down in the trench, not up in the air like this. So if you're holding your guitar, sorry, if you're holding your guitar pick or your, your hand, your picking hand, this way, and you do this sort of a thing, every time that you're not playing, the pick comes out of the trench and it's up in the air away from the strings. That's not where you want it to be, really, ever, if you can avoid it. So we want the point of rest, the place where the pick is resting when you're not playing, down in the trench. And if you make just that one little change to your guitar playing, not only will your sweep picking advance much more rapidly, but everything that you do will get much, much, much easier. It'll be more efficient, and it'll be faster, and it'll be easier to play fast. Now, you might be thinking, well, wait a minute, we can't have the pick down in the, in the trench all the time because what happens if we need to skip a string or jump over a string or something like that? The pick must come out of the trench in order to jump over a string. That is true. That is correct. I'm not saying that the pick would never leave the trench. What I'm saying is that when the pick is at rest, it should be down in the trench, not up in the air. So, one of the ways that you can do that is by using a technique called thumb muting, which is beyond the scope of this particular video, but I've got other videos on thumb muting. And what that does is it keeps the point of rest for the pick down in the trench. So regardless of how you hold your picking hand, you want the pick to be resting down here, not up here. Because with sweep picking, we're gonna be going across the strings like this. And if our hand, if the pick naturally rests out here, 
then we start having this bouncing up and down motion where even if you go downstroke, 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 it basically what's happening is the pick is going in the trench, out of the trench, in the trench, out of the trench, in the trench, out of the trench. That's no good. Don't want that. You want this where the pick is in the trench and it stays there as much as possible while you're doing the sweep picking. Again, there will be times when the pick has to come out, and that's okay if you needed to jump over a string to do something, but generally the point of rest is in the trench, okay? Now that is true for sweep picking or pretty much anything that you want to do. This is the place where you want the pick to be. If it's anywhere else, you're going to have a lot of inefficiency and it's going to create some problems along the way. Now you'll see players where their point of rest is up here in the air and many of those players can play very, very well. Some of those players are even great players. So I'm not saying that you cannot develop great guitar technique with the point of rest in the air. I'm just, but I'm gonna say it's gonna be a lot harder and require many, 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 many more hours, probably thousands of hours of additional practice time. Let's cut out the additional waste, rest the pick in the trench and we'll be just fine. Now the third point here in this beginner's guide to how to sweep pick, the sweep picking tutorial, is we want to make sure that we know exactly where the motions, where the picking motions for sweep picking should come from, okay? So before we talk about where they come from, let's talk about where they should not come from because that would be easier to then understand where they come from. So we don't want them to come from the wrist, okay? So if you're doing this, if you're turning your wrist that's an inefficient way to do sweep picking. It's inefficient because the, the pick changes its angle in relation to the strings. When you get to the higher string, it's at a different angle than it is here on the lower strings. We want the angle to be the same, to be consistent from string six to string one. The other thing is that we wanna make sure that our wrist stays basically straight. We don't wanna have to play like, this is not good ergonomics for your arm or your hand, okay? And if you're playing really fast, this motion, you know, over and over and over again, repetitive, is hard on your joints, all right? So, but the main thing is tone. We want to keep the angle consistent as we go through. Now, we also don't want the motion to come only from the elbow because if, if you do that, you've got the same problem. The, the angle of the pick changes as we go from string six or five all the way to string two or one. We want that angle to be the same. So we have the same tone, the same articulation, the same pick attack, the wrist stay straight, et cetera, okay? So the motions really are gonna come from a combination of the shoulder and the elbow, but not the wrist. The wrist is really not involved. So we wanna do this here. So you'll see that the motion is coming from my shoulder and my elbow. Now, if you want a much more detailed explanation about how to make the motions and where exactly the motions come from, you can check out my other video called How to Sweep Pick from the Wrist or Elbow. You can check out that video here on YouTube for a much more detailed explanation of the motions. All right, number four in our beginner's guide to sweep picking is how the pick should travel across the strings. We want the pick essentially to move perpendicular with the strings. Right? We don't want an angle like this. We don't want an angle like this. We want it to be basically straight, so essentially in line with the pickup here. It doesn't matter if the pick is here or here or here, but we want it this way. We don't want it that way or this way. Okay, so if you're using your, your wrist or your elbow, the pick's not gonna travel in a straight line. Only when you use your elbow in combination with your shoulder, which you may have just seen in the previous video, can we get the pick to move essentially per or perpendicular to the strings or parallel with the pickup? So we want that to stay in this angle so that, the, so that the pick angle relative to the strings is consistent, the tone is consistent, and the pick attack and articulation are consistent. This will help the, the sweep picking feel smoother when you play it. It will make it sound smoother and sound more consistent when you do it. All right, so step five in our beginner's guide to sweep picking, how to practice your sweep picking motions on the guitar the right way. So the first thing that we wanna do is to remove the left hand out of the equation. So what we're gonna do is just take your left hand and just mute the strings like this so that you're only focused on the right hand, okay? Keep the hand separate for now so that we make sure that 
We're holding the pick in a good way. We're holding our hand in a good way. We're not up here where the point of rest is way up in the air. So the point of rest is down here. We've got the motions coming from the elbow and the shoulder. The pick is moving in a perpendicular 90 degrees from in relation to the strings. So we want to do all of those things and then just practice the sweep picking motions. And the most important thing here at this stage is that we don't have any bouncing. We don't have down and then down and then down. You see how my pick comes up in the air after I play? We don't want that. That is not sweep picking. Okay. If you do a whole bunch of downstrokes in a row, that is not sweep picking because those were six individual picking motions. That is not sweep picking. That's just called six downstrokes. Same thing with this, six upstrokes. This is not sweep picking. Even though the pick is moving in the same direction, it's still not sweep picking because it's six motions, not one. We want this. That's sweep picking. One motion to go across all the strings or whatever number of strings you're playing. So by muting this, let's say we practice a little three string arpeggio, I'm just gonna take the pick and with one motion, my arm moves over, my pick just falls onto the next string, and then I pull my arm back. So I'm pushing the pick across and pulling it back. I am not doing this, down, stop, down, stop, down, stop, it's not this, okay? Where I've got to initiate the motion three separate times. That's no good, that's not sweep picking. You initiate the motion once, this is one movement. Just like if I take the pick out of the trench and just don't touch the strings, it's this. One motion this way, one motion this way. One, one. Now I'll put the pick back down in the trench, same exact thing. So you're gonna hear three separate events. You're gonna hear the pick hitting that string and this string and this string, but my hand does not stop. That's the point. The hand doesn't stop in between string three and two or between string two and one. It continues on. So let's take a look at that again. It's continuously moving. Down, 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 one motion all the way across and then one motion this way. The hand doesn't stop. One motion, one motion. So we want to get used to how that feels. We're going to take the left hand out, just muting the strings, and do it like this. And now you really have to concentrate here. You have to be sensitive to what it feels like to push your hand across the strings and pull it back, and how that feels different in your body than doing three separate downstrokes and three separate upstrokes. This is a feeling, okay? So if you're trying to correct or establish the right way to do sweep picking, you can't do it just by looking at your hand. I mean, that looking at your hand will help, but that's not enough. You have to memorize how it feels to push the hand across the strings and then have the strings be articulated one at a time as your hand continuously moves. That's a specific feeling that you need to remember and memorize. Because once you do that, you'll never ever have to think about how to sweep pick the right way again, because you'll do it automatically because you're just doing it by feel. You're not having to think about anything. And that's where you wanna to get to. So in order to play anything by feeling, you have to memorize what the feeling feels like so that when you do it any other way, you'll immediately recognize, huh, that feels different. That's not the right way. It's easier to make corrections by comparing what it's supposed to feel like, because you now know, versus what it's actually feeling like the wrong way, than it is to try and do it visually with your eyes. All right, now let's talk about step six, how to build speed when using sweep picking. Well, what you're gonna find in the beginning, when you're, if you're still struggling with the sweep picking motions, you don't even worry about speed right now because speed is not even relevant at this stage until we, we have all the first five steps going smoothly and you've memorized the feeling. Once that happens, being able to sweep pick fast for this hand will be very easy. I mean, you can go 
really, really fast with the right hand and it will be extremely easy. The speed really comes later once this is mastered and now we get to the next stage which is synchronizing the left hand, the fretting hand, with whatever the right hand is going to sweep it through. Before we go on to our final step here, you might want to check out another video on sweep picking I've created called Sweep Picking Tutorial, The Missing Link to Sweep Picking Mastery. It will help you on your way to getting this final step that we're going to talk about next down. So go check out that video real quick and then come right back to this one and watch step number seven. All right, number seven in our beginner's guide to sweep picking, how to synchronize your fretting hand motions with your sweep picking. Now it's very important that we master the right hand, the, the sweep picking motions, and get that really solid before we even start to sync the left hand to it. Because if this hand isn't down, you're gonna be trying to synchronize the fretting hand to a picking hand which isn't moving in the right way. Okay, so focus on steps one to six first, be sure about it, that you've really got it, and then we deal with the synchronization of the fretting hand. Now, in terms of how do we do that, how do we synchronize with the fretting hand motions? There's gonna be a couple things you're gonna notice. When you go through arpeggios, let's say, if I play this one here, I play through that arpeggio, you'll notice that it's basically one note per string until we get here. So because it's only one note per string, the, the fretting hand fingers might get a little bit lazy. What, what I mean by that is, after you play the first note, because this note is not really in the way of the next string, it may be a little lazy, a little slow in getting off this string before we move to the next note. When that happens, you get a little bit of this sound. Just for a split second, there's a little bit of this bleeding. And you hear it again, maybe here. So we don't want... We don't want that sound. We want the notes to be separated and articulated cleanly. So, in terms of synchronizing this hand with this hand, the starting point really isn't even synchronizing the two hands. The starting point is to synchronize when the finger that you just played over here, the timing of when it leaves that note with the timing of when the next finger plays the new note. So this here, that transfer from this note to that note has to happen at the same time. In other words, when that finger goes down, this finger goes off at exactly the same time. Same thing between this finger and this finger. We don't want to be lazy and have this finger arrive at this note before this note is off, okay? So we don't want to take this note off early. We don't want to take it off before this one gets here, but we also don't want to leave it on after, even for a split moment, uh, when this guy comes down. So we want to make that transfer instantaneous. So every time that we change, New note, new finger goes down, the last one comes off exactly at the same time. That's super important, not only sweep picking, but for playing a scale or, or whatever else, that transfer of notes in the fretting hand, that the, the, the new note goes down as the old note comes off exactly at the same time, is super critical for all kinds of guitar technique doing anything, all right? so. Again, the first six steps is over here, getting this motion, everything correct in the right hand. Then the next step is just getting the left hand to transfer fingers at exactly the same time with no overlap, even for like, you know, a tiny fraction of a second. We don't want that. So really practice that separately. Once you have that down, then we'll come down to linking these two hands up and it will be a lot easier. <laughs> It won't really be hard at all because everything is perfect in both hands separate. When you put them together, it should flow pretty easily, pretty quickly. Now, if that doesn't happen, keep things really slow, practice slow. But one word of caution, 
When you slow everything down, don't change anything. And this is a huge mistake that people make when they practice slow. As soon as they slow the tempo down, they start changing all kinds of stuff and they don't realize it. And the first thing that gets changed that we don't want to change is that we go from sweep picking to individual downstrokes or individual upstrokes. No good. You don't want that. Okay, so if you play it really slow like this, the right hand needs to continuously move. We don't want that hand to slow down or stop. I mean, it's going to slow down, but we don't want it to stop. We don't want it to turn into this up, up. So you watch this hand. It's going to go up and then stop, up and then stop, up and then stop. Now, it's, it might look like I'm doing everything right, but I'm not. This is not right at all. This, this is no good because I'm doing start, stop, start, stop, start, stop, start, stop. No good. We want continuous motions. This hand keeps moving. It does not stop. So that's the most important thing to remember when you practice slowly. Don't change what you need the hand to do when you're playing at full speed. If you like this video, you're going to love my personalized breakthrough guitar lessons. I'm going to show you exactly how to transform your guitar playing from being just okay to being really awesome, even if you're feeling stuck right now or you're having some self-doubts about your guitar playing. Just imagine how much better your guitar playing will become when you know exactly what to do and exactly how to practice and have the guidance and roadmap to get you there. I've done this for thousands of people over the years. If you're willing to do the work, if you can practice at least 30 minutes a day on the things that I teach you to do, I'm absolutely certain I can help you become the guitar player that you want to be. Unlike other lessons online, you're not going to get some generic cookie cutter course from me. You get lessons customized to you, who you are, what your goals are, your challenges, your strengths, your weaknesses, your learning style, experience, frustrations, and most importantly, who you want to become. So check out my Breakthrough Guitar Lessons at tomhess.net forward slash guitar and see if they're right for you. I'll see you on the other side.